Okay, so we're back here with our sports car company that we've created in the 70s. So it's about 1977 now. We obviously spent about five years developing this car and we've been selling it for uh, about two years now. And yeah, we're just going to have a look at the stats here. So if we go into the, uh, I think if we just look on the markets here, actually, we can have a look in terms of the monthly sales data. So most of our sales are coming from the muscle category. Uh, and then we have some being sold through sport and muscle premium. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty good. And I think in terms of market awareness, we can see that it's growing, uh, but we can probably let it grow a little bit more. So I, I think while that happens, what we'll do in this case, so the problem that we are going to run into pretty soon is that there is a limit in terms of how much we can uh, we are using 100% of our factory uh, for producing this car. Um, and of course, the, the car factory is having to work twice as many shifts compared to the engine factory. And that's just because we use that. Uh, basically, the chassis design that we used can't be manufactured on a, on a mass level. So we need to sort that out at some point. But I don't want to do a brand new design right now. I think we're first going to bring an update to this car. Then we'll keep selling it for a bit while uh, we go for a new design that will use the uh, basically something that we can mass produce. So we'll just open this trim. And this is quite important if you want to save or just be a little bit more efficient is not to constantly develop brand new models, but you can just sort of iterate on, on the same model. Even if you want to, you can do something similar like what uh, Porsche did with the 911, where you constantly just sort of redesign the same shape and bring small incremental improvements to it over the years, and you just keep it relevant, but it's sort of an evolution of the same car. I'm not sure if that's what we're going to do here. So um, actually, we need to go back and just edit the project. So what you do if you want to do a facelift, we'll create a new car facelift here. And we'll just call this the Sport MK2. Sport Mark 2. And we go into the car designer. Actually, one second. Before we do that, we may want to edit the engine project as well. So we'll, we'll update the engine and the car itself for this. Create a new engine facelift. Uh, modify the existing one so we can just agree. This will be the replacement, which will be the Mark II. Now the engine's actually fine. It produces a lot of power already, so we don't need to do much here, but I think it's just more. But you need to bring updates anyway to retool the engine factory. You don't have to update it. You can just basically uh, do nothing and, and retool the factory. But since we're doing this, we may as well look at what we can change here. So, well, the only issue we really had was the headers, uh, which if we want to, I mean, it's not really an issue. We can just get a tiny bit more power there. If we want to, we could go for a quad carburetor setup. Let's see. That'll, that'll make a big difference in terms of throttle response, which is good. It will make the engine quite a bit heavier as well. Uh, it will reduce the reliability. It's going to allow us to run a bit more compression or advance the timing. Uh, does make it quite a bit more expensive as well. But I think it's okay because um, actually overall uh, the performance index will go up and we're producing much more engines than we are cars at the moment. So it's maybe a good thing for the engineers to get some practice in designing this because that'll bring down the time it takes if we want to do this uh, setup in future, which we may or may not do, we'll see. So if we move this to, yeah, so we can get a little bit of extra power here. This will actually save weight and rest is about the same. This is less expensive. That's interesting. Didn't notice that. So the material costs for 
material cost and the weights keep going down with the headers so we may as well go for the long tubular setup see what that looks like the size is still not going to be an issue because we have a real real drive setup so this should all be fine um still we're not running any catalytic converter we can probably do that with our next model because i think that's just going to cause a restriction in the engine right now fuel mixture is okay uh, we can increase the compression a bit maybe to about there and then we'll keep increasing the ignition timing until we get to about 91 octane which is what this is currently running on it's the regular unleaded should we push the rpm limit a bit yeah this will this will give it a better performance index even though it does negatively affect the reliability. But as I said, okay, this is too much because um, I think we'll just keep it here. Uh, well, you know, I could always get uh, forged pistons and conrods and that'll take care of that problem, but I don't really need uh, this. Uh, I mean, we're gonna go from the previous engine, which was about 190, I think, to 220. So that's a pretty big step up in power for the update. Um, Sure, that'll be enough. Just have a quick test. Right, so that takes care of the engine. Uh, let's just make sure everything's fine from the factory perspective. Again, I'm not going to, we don't have enough cash to spare to start uh, putting extra facilities in here so we're kind of going to have to stick to what we have but but the important part is that we will be retooling again uh, which will take care of some of the minor tooling condition loss that we would have taken we'll stick to a high uh, qa threshold for now so this is all done engineering time it will take about 16 months um, let's keep it I, i'm not going to go for a more reliable engine right now We can have a look if that's having any impact on the rating, but I don't know if it will. Let's get into the car designer here. So what we'll do, this will all still be the same. Okay, wait, it's got more wheel spin because of the extra power. So we'll need to sort that, that out. Um, the rest, I think, will mostly keep the same. Maybe for the facelift, we'll give it a premium A-track. It's already got a standard A-track, which I think the previous one was cassette. So that would already be an improvement in the previous one. By the way, if you do do facelifts, even though you're still selecting premium interior, if you're going into new eras, that will be basically an updated premium interior. So even doing a facelift on a car without changing anything could still improve the rating quite a bit. Uh, and we know that muscle and muscle premium is important for us right now. This will sort of help overall. Standard 60s, standard 70s. Does this make a difference? It does actually. So even though it shows the same, seems to show the same safety, it does definitely improve. So let's do this. I think we can afford to have some extra, if we want to bring a couple of updates, we can do hydraulic steering, which will reduce sportiness a bit but it will make the car a lot more comfortable. And I think comfortable does still matter within these categories, uh, or comfort does matter. Yes, it does matter a bit for muscle, even for sport. And 
actually, if you look at all three of these categories, uh, so f even fun premium, so muscle, sport, muscle premium, and fun premium, there is 0% desire for reliability. So this, uh, these segments do not care about rely reliability at all. So it's effectively a complete waste of time to put efforts there. Now, what you do need to keep in mind is that if you look up here at my prestige and reputation, um, we are losing reputation because of the fact that we're making unreliable cars. So if you want to have a company that's a bit more broadly focused and maybe we make some family cars and we make some utility vehicles as well you may want to look at reliability even in the performance vehicles because that will drag down the over overall company reputation but for us right now that's not important it's all about prestige um, and we'll do gas monotube i think i might be adding a lot of engineering time here potentially but that's okay because the current car that we're selling is still fine. This is just to have an update ready in a couple of years time. If that's how long it's going to take, then we need to deal, get rid of this wheel spin problem. I think the easiest way to do that is by just either we have to increase the top speed, which we can do. I mean, I don't even think it can reach that speed. And then we'll change the spacing here a bit. Actually, I think this is fine. It can still have a little bit of wheel spin, just like the previous model. So this will just be more powerful. Let's see how fast this goes around the test track. It's at a 127, so it's maybe about a second faster than it was before. Okay, so sorting out the factory for this. No changes needed here just yet. Uh, make about 1,700. I don't think we're going to change anything. There's a risk of recalls here uh, because of where the the QA threshold is. So there, there could be some cars that we're letting through here where the build quality isn't great, and that could lead to a recall. Uh, but for now, I don't think, I think we'll take the risk on that. Okay, so let's not worry about the re reliability. And this is going to be 19.4, so it's about 20 months. Uh, so the next model that we're going to make is going to be considerably less reliable than the previous one. Um, but as I said, the demographics that are buying right now don't seem to care about that. So we can see this is going to be pretty much immediately profitable once we start selling. Uh, I wonder if we should increase the minimum margin or just... So put like at least a 5% margin when we're including the cost of the tooling and the engineering of this design. We haven't actually changed the look of the car. It still looks exactly the same as the previous one, but it's fine. This is just a, it's just an update. We don't need a loan and we'll sign this off. Oh, and there we go. We've got a quality issue. So recall, uh, it's going to be difficult to fix. The issue isn't severe. So full recall is 19.5 million and it'll damage our reputation by one. Quiet recall is considerably less expensive but we can suffer prestige damage if that happens, or we can do nothing, but that could take huge hits to our, pre uh, to our reputation and prestige. As I said, we don't really care about the reputation so much, but we could probably afford to do a full recall here. I mean, 20 million isn't that much in the grand 
grand scheme of things and we don't care about the reputation damage. So we're going to do this and we'll just keep going for a bit. Let's just speed this up till we get to our next car. So we're continuously making a uh, profit at the moment. Oh, there's something important. So I need to look at this. It will give us a couple of months worth of sales while we're setting up the new factory. Maybe we want to increase the target stock to nine months just to make sure that we don't have a stock shortfall while we're retooling the factories because we can't produce in that window. Right. But now we're making big profits because we're not uh, we're not producing any cars, but we're still selling off that stock that we have built up. And by the time that's done, we'll have our facelift model out. Let's see, what do we get here? New interior, gearing, safety, and turbo. So as soon as these are done researching, we will we will design our new car. So this is going to be ready now. So on the turbo, I actually just see gearing. That's okay. We don't need to wait for that. I actually don't build turbo cars a lot. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, please do comment if other people that have played this game in campaign mode, you do use the turbos quite a bit. Generally, I find that the extra engineering time and cost associated with it isn't worth it for me. But uh, and, and the thing about turbos, so and I think some of this is reflected in the game as well, in at least in this game uh turbos in general even in the modern era have a lot of turbo lag and what that effectively means so in real life is first of all the car's not as responsive it's not as responsive that when you put your foot on the accelerator it immediately uh, has an impact in terms of the just the engine response and the car accelerating basically but a big problem that you have of sports cars as well is that if um, it means that your torque curve isn't uh, smooth and it, it creates this step change where basically all of the power comes on and it's particularly pr prevalent with really large turbos and, and powerful engines, which can break traction. And if you have, uh, especially like a rear drive car, um, that can become quite difficult to handle. I think that does get reflected in the game. It definitely takes the responsiveness into account. Uh, and I think maybe it has a rating for smoothness as well, although I don't know if that's just generally how smooth the engine runs and if it also includes how smooth the, the torque curve is in, in general. Um, right, so I think at this point we're ready to get the new model out. So that's what we're, we're going to start doing right now. Have a quick look at our next car project what that's going to look like. So I guess uh, since we know we're more in the muscle premium segment now, we'll probably target this demographic. And let's just have a look at the body designs that are currently available to us. Um, body here, body type. So again, let's just get rid of stuff that we're definitely not going to use and sort of keep everything else. I kind of like this, but it's not a two door coupe. Um, we could also go for something like this, which is like a sedan layout, but it does have coupe options. This is similar, but it's a little bit shorter in terms of the wheelbase. I guess this one, yeah, it's just a little bit shorter, but it's okay. We can have, we can have the longer car. This is also quite nice. And if we're not going to have a four door version, maybe this is more the sort of thing that we should be going for. Two point four meters. This is about two point six. Let's go for this. So we'll stick to steel. To see the other options. We don't need something lightweight. This is going to be the big difference. So we had a space frame uh, which does limit the amount of units you can get out. We're going to move to the monocoque. So that's going to be a lot more engineering time required, but it's okay. We've already got a car that's selling. Uh, so we can keep making money while this is being developed. And 
Right. This doesn't really matter so much, but it will require additional factory add-ons. We could get away with doing this one, but that will increase our tooling costs. It's fine. Um, engine placement, we will again go for the longitudinal layout. Double wishbone, front and back. So this is more or less the same as the previous car, except for the fact that we're not doing the space frame anymore. Uh, now, in terms of the engine, should we go for a completely new design or should we just use the one we currently have? So we'll clone one of our existing variants here. This one. And this will be the Mark III. All right, so we can basically just do an update to this engine if there is anything significant that we need to change. Uh, we're not going to do the turbo. This can stay the same. We can slightly increase the ignition timing. Yeah, I guess not, not enough change. So this will effectively be the same engine again, but I do want to I, I do want to create a new variant just because uh, we're going to need to retool the factory again. And I think we, we do need to do that in order to retool the factory. Okay, so our options here, we have this one, which is the coupe. Right, so it's just different types of coupe. So we either have the one with the back window, which is probably slightly more aerodynamic, I would think. And maybe a bit more practical. Let's go for this. Yeah, so this one's got more cargo volume, so it will get a, it's got more cabin and cargo volume, so it will get a better rating in terms of practicality. I need to check again if that, I'm pretty sure it doesn't make a difference in the sports car segment, but some of the other segments that might be picking up this car, it could make a difference. So it is worth having this. Uh, we'll stick to the red for now. Let's see for the wheels. Maybe stick to similar ones as last time, or maybe pick something different. This looks a bit too modern almost for what are we in? 79. Not that I have any idea what eras each of these would be from. Kind of like this. Uh, let's just keep it simple and go with something similar to what we had before so that there's at least something that carries over from the previous design. Uh, rear wheel drive, it will be a manual five speed. And it's interesting that the estimated top speed is so much higher than the previous car. I can't imagine that can just be down to aerodynamics. Uh, I wonder why that's the case. Spacing, let's bring that down quite a bit. Oh, no, actually, I might be thinking of the first variant that was designed. So maybe it's not that different. Radial sports compound. We'll keep the proportions the same as before for now. But I do have the option of further increasing the size of the rear tires if that is a problem in terms of wheel spin. Uh, we'll, let's see, solid, vented discs. Let's start with solid. We can do an update later where we have the vented, vented ones. Solid, single piston. It should be okay. Oh, actually... This does not have the option of four seats like the previous car, but that's okay. I guess we're just committing to this type of design then. Should I go, let's do premium. What I might do later on is just create another variant of this. So I can have one which is sort of going to be the manual sports car variant and very sports car focused. And then I can perhaps create a GT car variant, which will be an automatic. Uh, but for now, I'm sort of straddling the middle ground and I'm choosing a premium interior over sport just because this is a bit more actually uh this is the first time i've noticed this i guess the comfort's the same so i might as well go for a sports interior engineering time is the same i'll save a little bit of engineering time on this one because of the familiarity but we'll we'll make the sacrifice in this case uh 
should we do the premium a track it does add quite a bit of engineering time but then we do have some minority so let's let's go for this no power steering for now let's save time there go for the standard 70s safety standard springs two gas monotube and sports preset now if it's the same as the previous car i can probably get away adjusting this a little bit but first i want to see if if wheel spins a problem not really wheel spins okay so we do not need to change the wheels okay so then we can get rid of some of this negative camber on the rear wheels okay it seems like the rating's starting to go down again so i'm just sort of going to balance it out there the rest is probably okay uh, we'll stiffen up the front dampers a little bit i'm not too worried about these suggestions um they are really just suggestions in some cases if you have something that's really not set up correctly it'll tell you uh and, and you need to act on that but the fact that the front and the rear dampers are hard is not really a problem given that this is a sports car and that's sort of to be expected if we were building a luxury car and it was telling us that then we had a problem but uh So we're just going to call this the Raptor 2 because it's part of the evolution and it will still be this sport. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Let's send it around the test track, just get the time for this. that's yeah slightly faster again and it does actually get to a top speed of 300. okay then so we need to uh this is all done we basically need to set up the factory now so we will use the factory that's currently currently producing the old one at this point, because I've got a bit of money now, I could actually consider doing some upgrades to the factory here. And I think the maintenance may not be a bad idea. It sometimes takes a bit of time to build these as well. So we may just need to build up some stock before we get there. Uh, but this will mean that the tooling will wear slower uh you know what i'm gonna go one more round without having that done so okay so we can produce 2600 and you may wanna this will increase the cost per unit slightly but i do want to bring up this qa threshold a little bit because i don't want to have to deal with too many recalls so we'll we'll hover around 2500 units i think that's fine and then we'll just need to get more or less the same from the engine so let's look at the engineering time okay we want this to since we know that the reliability really doesn't matter uh, we can just bring this down so this will take about 50 weeks that's really decent that's actually pretty quick in fact i'm thinking i may want to go back and add some stuff in that I yeah yeah we can do that in the next model as well so for now we'll just keep going rest is fine so 51 weeks sorry uh 51 months is how long it's going to take engine factory let's see I don't know why it doesn't show the picture for this and this factory is not going to produce the mk2 it's just going to produce the mk3 so we're going to get to 2400 units which is a little bit less so we may need to drop this qa threshold 
just to get to the same number. Now the two factories are in sync in terms of the production numbers, which we couldn't do before because of the space frame that we had on the cars. Uh, this is going to be very quick. So if I wanted to save the company's reputation, well, I guess something else I could do. So you can, you can reduce the pressure, which will help them learn more. And that will make it faster if you want to design similar engines in the future. So we'll do that. We can also then increase the reliability. And I know this doesn't really matter, but if we do want to launch different types of cars later on, the reputation boost, or at least the lack of reputation drop, would help us. Okay, so this is all good then. So we will sell this one, maybe at a minimum of a 10% margin. I think we can afford to do that. It'll probably sell at a lot higher margin than that, because by the time we start selling this, we're, we're going to have enough presence in the market, or at least market awareness that these should sell fairly easily, especially considering how high it's uh, currently rated relative to the competing cars that it's up against. No loan needed. Okay. Yeah, so it's not going to, we won't need a whole lot of time uh to configure the new factories and there will be probably enough supplies from the original raptor to cover that so let's speed up the time a bit and we'll wait for it to get to the end of 82 or beginning of 83. okay so we are just going into the factory configurations now uh really looking good on the cash side so if you consider that we started with about 500 million and we're up to 800 million in cash now uh and still taking big profits every month and about to launch a new car model as well so we'll see how the new one does in terms of sales so now we can sell more and we're selling at a pretty high margin so as the demand is going up it's at a 70 percent margin uh so pretty soon this should start becoming profitable we're losing money right now i guess also because we are building up stock uh to save but uh i think i can pretty much end this series here unless somebody wants to see more of this particular company that we've done but that's essentially how you can get started with a sports car company and as i said i think the most important thing to remember is like we did here, you don't have to design completely new cars every time. You also don't need to design completely new engines. So if cash is a problem, you can just keep redesigning or sort of updating the same cars. That'll save you a lot of time. It'll save you a little bit of money as well. And uh, then you just really need to make sure you have a good understanding of what matters to that segment and then produce something that's competitive in that segment. But thanks for watching. Uh, do let me know if you want to see more videos on automation. And if you like these videos, please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.